So I had a challenge for the team over at Sandvik Koromon. I decided to see what they could do to get this part done on an Akuma Maltus U3000. So we've got Keith, Dan, and Corey, three experts in their own right. The only requirements they were given was process security to be balanced with productivity. And we're gonna talk about how they tackled that. You guys work together across turning, solid round tools, and indexable rotating. How did we get to the part here? In uh, the Akuma Maltus, on this particular part, we started with the turning, and we went with the decision to use core turn prime with our B-shaped insert, uh, the new generation of prime. And from there, we roughed the first half of the part from the front flange up to the face. We also cut the front face, and then we finished both of those surfaces, as well as cutting the undercut and finishing the undercut, both roughing and finishing. So we chose Quartern Prime because it's a multi-directional platform. If you engage it properly and use it programmed efficiently, you can get eight cutting edges off of Quartern Prime B, which makes it a very good choice for a sustainable machine. Awesome. And the multitask machine can do a lot in there. Now, from what I understand, Prime recently had some revisions to the inserts. It did. Uh, the first generation of Prime, we had some complications with insert movement. And we also received a lot of market feedback that they would like more edges on Prime. So the new generation of Prime turning or core turn Prime B is a double-sided insert. So now we have a negative pocket. We've also improved the pocket. We have seven contact areas now within the pocket, which makes for a really secure pocket in a true multi-directional turning platform. So what did we tackle next? So next, <clears throat> we tackled the front of the part with the Cormill MH20. Now, the Cormo MH20 is coming on its second year of release, and it's a dedicated high feed tool, really optimized for pocketing and core machining. So then we transitioned to solid round tools. So we brought in the Core Mill Dura, which is our versatile line of end mills, because we really wanted to show off that true versatility on this part. So we came in with a four flute and did some floor finishing, as well as finishing the walls of those pockets. And I mean, with the rotation of the part as you're feeding, there's a lot of forces on that tool, and the Dura Mill stood up. Yeah, it sounded great. Very quiet, uh, very clean finish, as you can see. So it did a really good job. Nice. So where do we go next? All right. So for the flats on the part, we went to a new concept called the Core Mill MR80. Okay. Now, the MR80 was just released in October of 23. And it's a double-sided, positive, round button insert cutter. A couple of reasons we went that direction. One, there's a six millimeter radius requirement on the part. And the second reason is double-sided as I spoke about. So it's got good positive cutting action. So we wanted something we could high feed with, mm -hmm. but be very process security minded. So that was one of the reasons, one of the main reasons we went with the core mill MR80. Perfect, what came next? We brought back the uh, solid round tool. So we brought back that four fluked uh, whisper cut end mill and uh, did those pockets uh, within the middle of those flats. Uh, we did a helical ramp down into the park and then we uh, did some high feed finishing uh, to open up the pocket. So we finished up with the whisper cut end mill, doing the pockets, and we came in with our core drill 860 GM, our uh, optimized multi-material drill to come in and do those quarter inch holes. So after we did the holes around the pocket, uh, we came in, reset, and we did the, the five holes on the face with the same drill. Perfect. So we've worked our way mostly down the part. What comes next? So next we actually stick with solid round tools. So we came in with four flute whisper cut, and we did the flats on the collar. And really, we just went in and pretty much did a full slot uh, with those with that whisper cut end mill uh, on all four sides. And uh, then we moved on to turning. From there, we went and we cut the undercut behind the collar with the new core cut, too. Uh, we did a plunge turn method. And many folks might wonder why we chose to do that at the end. Why would we not rough that portion out or cut that portion when we were doing the rest of the turning? The answer to that is, you tasked us with balancing productivity process security. Yeah. So you'll notice throughout as we've explained this, we've, we've worked our way from the front of the part to the back, leaving it as rigid as we can. Mm -hmm. Now that's going to allow us to have better surface finishes, okay, and less chatter when we're turning, all things that go into that process security. So we come back on the final operation, we undercut the collar back there, get the part ready for part off and transfer to the subspin. 
Yeah, and that's something I really appreciate because reduced vibration, reduced wear, these are all things that are going to help me cut costs mm -hmm. and keep that tool running longer so I can split that labor off to other machines and so I don't have someone watching like a hawk with their hand over the e-stop. Right. Yeah, in today's machining environment, we, we really see a push for folks that are looking for that balance. Yeah. You know, we have a lot more autonomous cells and we have, um, you know, we all know about the skills gap that's in the industry. So could we have ran that part faster? Yeah, probably. But would we have been as controllable and secure? Um, I don't think so, Dan. What do you think? Well, I think this has allowed the, the customer, customer part would allow that machinist to walk away and go set up another machine and know that the part's going to be stable and productive. Well, guys, I think you really knocked it out of the park working together. Uh, it's one of the things I love about bringing a challenge to Sandvik Coromont and really how we all ended up here today is they have people around the world that are trained there to support manufacturing and help it grow. Yeah, and just like we talked about earlier, how valuable partnerships can be, you know, externally with Mastercam and, and other companies, but internally as well. So you've got the three of us from three different disciplines that can come together and create a part just like this. Absolutely. And, and that's not the, that's just the beginning of it. I mean, Mastercam was a fantastic partner in this project, but we also have so many other resources that are available to our customers out there. Yeah, to that point, Dan, we, we have special project teams, Arthur, as you know, um, we, we can provide comprehensive support uh, all the way from programming to fixture design and just anything that, that the clients may need. Uh, Cormont can bring that as an offering. So uh, we're, we're proud to be able to have that kind of breadth of service. And I mean, really, it all ties back into distributors as well, who work and partner with you, as well as people like the team at Akuma. If you needed their support during this, they would have been there, thanks to the way that you guys work together. Absolutely. So until next time, just keep your spindles turning and earning. Yeah. That's the wrong part. It's like an infomercial for Is this the wrong part? You mean the wrong part? Oh, no, 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 it's not. That's the only I, one. My apologies. Girl holes in it. You're sorry, I'm stupid. He just needs to relax. It's got all the drilled, drilled holes. holes. I really wish you would just bring it down a notch. <laughs> <laughs>